Welcome to Eliminator RC's final September race. You guys stay tuned to some hot racing action while we go around and interview some of the drivers. What got you into the hobby, Kevin? Uh, well, I guess you could say my girlfriend. Uh, I've, uh, I've just been, uh, I've been kind of into it for a long time. I've always wanted a truck, but I never really got motivated to actually buy one. And now, this summer, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it for sure. So, loving it so far. So what have you done to your truck to uh, prepare it for racing? Uh, well, I got, uh, it's a Stampede 4x4 and uh, so far, we've replaced the uh, front A-arms because I broke them, and uh, the front bumper because I broke it, and new axles because I broke them. So pretty much, I've just been beating on this thing, but I'm loving it so far. This is the old nitro filling station, which is soon to become a bleacher board slash jump, as I used it earlier when I missed the line I was taking. But uh, as you guys can notice in the hobby, the way it's going is everything's going electric. Because nowadays you can go and get yourself an electric car that'll go faster than a nitro car, and you won't have to worry about tuning it, nor do you have to worry about bugging all your neighbors with the noise. It's the way it's going. Battery technology is getting better. You get longer runtime, and it's actually becoming more affordable for the end user. Tell me about your truck and uh, the future of RC is obviously electric and tell us why. Yeah, maintenance free, maintenance free. If you want to go faster, you just put a bigger motor in. With this low C truck, I put a different chassis underneath it. Brushless, of course. This one has all the technology. It's just bypass shocks in it. It handles fantastic on the track. And what are you running for a speed control? Uh, Castle, Castle speed control. I've got a, a card at home that I can hook into it and it can program it. Uh, I can tune in the punch, the, everything. You can tune them the way you want them. That's my team associated. I've just started running it again. I put a chassis brace in it. I've got the ballistic Novak motor in it, castle speed control. It's a very nimble truck. It's uh, light and fast. Why are the castle uh, speed controls seem to, to, to have almost dominated the market now? Why is that? I think it's affordability. It's affordability and the ability to tune. You can, uh, if, you, if, you, if you have a computer, you can tune them with your uh, computer as well. Other than that, it's, uh, it's just a good, uh, a good controller. So why did you decide to install the Cassie brace? Uh, you could tell there was a lot of flex in the chassis. You could grab it and you could actually bend it almost, you know, not in how you could bend it back and forth. So with the brace, it stiffens up the chassis and makes it uh, easier to drive. So if you're going electric, what do you do with your old nitro stuff? Usually a nitro motor, after you get a couple gallons in there anyways, it's worn out and it's more feasible to buy another one than rebuild it. So usually that's put by the wayside and used for spare parts. Your fuel tank and your other accessories like your tune pipe, well maybe you can find somebody else that can buy it or you can save it for a rainy day. So you're going to convert it, you're going to need another motor mount to adapt the motor. And on here is an 8 scale buggy that's actually part of the center diff mount. We've got a Castle Mama Monster in it. We got a radio tray that's been shortened, but you can also cut your previous radio tray. It's still got your steering serve on the same spot. And where the motor and the pipe used to sit, there's actually a tray that's made by Losi for this car that bolts into the original location so there's no extra holes drilled. And it holds your battery and your speed control at the back. So really it's a nice conversion that it fits underneath the body and it looks stock when you're done. So uh, we're looking at the General Lee again, but 
a little different from the one that uh, we saw last year. Yeah, this year I have uh, went to electric, went with uh, Team Associated, so I wanted to keep my body uh, color the same, so guys recognizing me on the track. And uh, what do you got under the body there, and, and what are you running? And well, it's a uh, Team Associated. We got uh, Tekken, four pole, 4,000 uh, kV. Pretty powerful motor, you know, it's not uh, too strong, but it's strong enough for the track. Won a couple trophies already this year with it. A couple seconds and one third place, and trying to get first place today. What's the strengths of this particular vehicle out there on the track? Reliability. Make a lot of adjustments on it, but you really don't have to, you know. I, I find uh, keeping it lower to the ground center of gravity works best on this type of track. It has lots of grip on this too, with these uh, aftermarket tires we're running, Proline. So with everything going electric, is there a big difference between all the classes now that everybody's like brushless and lipo? It's more so of a chassis difference, um, buggy and truggy are different because of wheel size. Truggy's a little bit easier to drive, a little bit more forgiving, whereas a buggy is a little bit faster, a little bit more on edge. Um, short course is a new thing too because it's got the bodies that actually cover the tires, so you don't have to worry about bumping and grinding, you don't get caught up as much. So yeah, there always will be different classes because there's always different chassis styles and different driving styles. But I wouldn't say nitro's going away yet, it's just electric has taken over for now. And if you look at the history of the hobby, years ago electric took over, nitro got strong again with technology and nitro motors came along, now electric's taking over again. It's only a couple more years before you're going to start seeing fuel injected nitro RC motors and that's going to come a long way, or smaller gasoline RC motors which have already started. Here we have somebody who die hard nitro. Yes. Did you foresee the the day when nitro's gone? Yeah, when fuel prices hit 80 bucks a gallon, sure. Until then, no, I'm not gonna stop running my nitro. Not at all. What's it now? $20? No, it's about 40 to $50 a gallon. Oh yeah? Yeah. But I'm doing electric conversion over the winter time, so. But I'm still gonna run nitro. And uh, how do you think the two compare? Uh, Sound-wise, obviously nitro's better, but for speed and power right off, electric, hands down. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the future anyways, electric. It will be. Do you see a day when uh, at the rate, at the full-size racetrack, there'll be electric cars racing each other? How long do you think that'll take? Oh, uh, probably, well, probably within probably 20 years, 30 years. Yeah. Guarantee it. You may recognize Tracy from a couple other seasons. Hi. Tracy, what are you racing today? Uh, I am racing my Slash 4x4. I recently installed MIP drive shafts. They're a lot tougher than the plastic ones. They don't tend to break as often, so they don't have to worry about changing them in the middle of a race day. Also started running LiPos. I was running nickel metal hydrate up until recently. So LiPos get better speeds out of it. Hopefully better placing. Hasn't been working out for me so far. <laughs> So I noticed you got B-Lock rims. Do you like those a lot better than the glue ones? Oh, I do. They hold on much better. Kevin's been complaining about his tires all day coming undone because the glue's coming undone. I don't have to worry about it with the B-Locks. So. And the tires are much nicer than the stock ones. They, they tend to grip the track a little bit better. We're a little loose today, so having some issues with that. But no, I love those tires. They're awesome. And you work on your truck 100% by yourself, so for all the other girls out there that want to get into it, they can do it themselves? They can do it themselves. I do everything myself as much as possible. I sometimes have to go and ask for help on how to do something, but I do everything myself. for tuning in to watch Eliminator RC's last race of 2012. You stay tuned for more RC TV. We're going to go have some fun. Yeah!